Deep within the deserts of Jordan, a secret sleeps. Hidden for centuries, whispered in the winds, lies a city unlike any other. This is Petra, the lost city, a testament to the ingenuity and artistry of a lost civilization. Swallowed by the sands of time, Petra remained hidden from the world, its secrets well guarded. For centuries, only the Bedouin people, the guardians of the desert, knew of its existence. Petra is no ordinary city, it's a city sculpted from the very heart of the mountains. Join us now as we journey back in time to uncover the secrets of this lost civilization and explore the wonders of Petra, the Rose City of Jordan. The story of Petra begins with the Nabataeans, a nomadic Arab tribe who, around the 4th century BC, chose this improbable location to establish their capital. They were a resourceful and innovative people, masters of trade and engineering. The Nabataeans were masters of water management, a vital skill in this arid environment. They devised ingenious systems of dams, channels, and cisterns, collecting and channeling precious rainwater to sustain their city and its inhabitants. The Seek, a narrow gorge, serves as the gateway to Petra. As you walk through this natural corridor, the sandstone walls towering hundreds of feet above seem to close in on you. And then, as the sick widens, you are greeted by a sight that takes your breath away. Carved into the sheer rock face, its facade bathed in the soft glow of the morning sun, is the treasury, Petra's most iconic monument. This magnificent structure, with its intricate carvings and towering columns, is a testament to the architectural prowess of the Nabataeans. As you venture deeper into Petra, you'll encounter a wealth of wonders. The monastery, a colossal temple carved high into the cliffs, the Roman amphitheater, and countless other tombs, temples, and dwellings. Join us as we delve deeper into the secrets of this lost city, exploring its ingenious water systems and marveling at its rock-cut architecture. The Nabataeans, often described as the masters of water, thrived in a land where most would have perished. Surrounded by towering cliffs and arid desert, they devised ingenious methods to not just survive, but to flourish. They knew that rainfall, though infrequent, could be a blessing if harnessed effectively. Every drop that fell upon the surrounding mountains and wadis was meticulously collected and channeled, transformed from a fleeting desert shower into a lifeline for their city. Imagine a system of interconnected channels, some as narrow as a hand, others wide enough to walk through, snaking their way across the landscape for miles. These channels, painstakingly carved into the rock, guided the precious rainwater down from the mountains, preventing evaporation and loss. It wasn't just the surface runoff that the Nabataeans captured. Through a combination of wells, cisterns, and ingenious water harvesting techniques, they were able to access and utilize these underground sources, ensuring a year-round supply for their city. These cisterns, often carved directly into the bedrock or built beneath the city streets, were marvels of engineering. Some were massive, capable of holding millions of gallons of water, collected during the infrequent but often torrential desert rains. This sophisticated water management system was not just a testament to the Nabataeans' practical skills, it was a reflection of their deep reverence for water. Water was not just a resource, it was a sacred gift to be respected, conserved, and celebrated. The ingenuity of the Nabataeans wasn't confined to hidden infrastructure. It was proudly displayed in the very heart of their city, where water wasn't just a necessity, but an integral part of Petra's architectural and social fabric. Public fountains, fed by the intricate network of channels, weren't just sources of refreshment. They were social hubs, gathering places where people could connect and share stories. Imagine strolling through the city's colonnaded streets, the sound of trickling water a constant companion. At its center, a magnificent fountain, its basin carved from a single block of stone, water cascading from the mouths of intricately carved lion heads. This harmonious blend of architecture and water wasn't merely decorative, it served a practical purpose. The constant flow of water through the city helped to regulate temperatures, providing a cool respite from the scorching desert heat. The legacy of the Nabataeans is etched not just in stone, 
but in the very flow of water that sustained their city. The true magic of Petra lies not just in its existence, but in its execution. The Nabataeans didn't simply build a city in the desert, they sculpted one from the very heart of the mountains. Imagine towering cliffs of rose-colored sandstone, their surfaces adorned not with paint or plaster, but with intricate carvings, grand facades, and colossal monuments. The process began with a deep understanding of the sandstone itself. The Nabataeans were masters of their material, recognizing its strengths and weaknesses. Using simple tools, chisels, hammers, wedges, they transformed the sheer rock face into a canvas for their creativity. They carved from the top down, working their way meticulously across the rock face creating intricate details, towering columns, and grand facades that seem to defy gravity. The Treasury, a monument to memory. No structure in Petra embodies this architectural mastery better than the Treasury, also known as al -Khazne. Hidden behind the narrow walls of the Sikh, its sudden reveal is a moment that leaves visitors breathless. The Treasury is more than just a tomb. It's a monument to a king a testament to the Nabataeans' reverence for their rulers and their belief in the afterlife. Carved into the sheer rock face, the treasury's facade soars over 130 feet high, an intricate tapestry of Hellenistic-inspired design. Two levels of six towering columns, crowned with Corinthian capitals, support a broken pediment adorned with figures of gods and goddesses. At the center, a tholos, a circular structure, houses the entrance to the tomb itself. While the true purpose of the treasury is a tomb for a Nabataean king, the legends only add to its allure. Beyond the treasury, a city of wonders. But Petra is more than just the treasury. It's a city of tombs, temples, and theaters, each carved with the same artistry and precision. As you venture deeper into Petra, you'll encounter the street of facades, a row of elaborate tombs carved into the cliff face each a testament to the wealth and status of its occupants. Further on, you'll discover the monastery, or ad Dare, a colossal structure that dwarfs even the treasury in size. The Roman influence is also evident in Petra, a reminder of the city's later rulers. Petra wasn't just a city, it was a living, breathing testament to the ingenuity and artistry of the Nabataean people. Crossroads of Civilization Petra's architectural wonders are undeniably captivating, but they represent only one facet of this lost city's story. To truly understand Petra, one must look beyond its magnificent facades and delve into its role as a bustling hub of ancient trade. Situated at the crossroads of vital trade routes connecting east and west, Petra was more than just a city carved in stone. It was a nexus of cultures, a melting pot of languages and ideas. Imagine caravans laden with exotic goods, arriving from distant lands after weeks of arduous travel. Merchants, their faces weathered by sun and wind, haggling in the bustling marketplaces. This was Petra at its zenith, a city pulsing with life, fueled by the flow of goods and ideas along the ancient trade routes. The caravans that converged on Petra carried a wealth of precious commodities, each telling a story of distant lands and ancient traditions. From the Arabian Peninsula came frankincense and myrrh, aromatic resins prized for their use in religious ceremonies and perfumes. From India and China flowed silks, spices, and precious stones, while Egypt supplied grain, papyrus, and intricate glassware. These goods weren't just traded within Petra's walls, they were processed, refined, and redistributed throughout the Mediterranean world. The Nabataeans, masters of trade and diplomacy, ensured the safe passage of these caravans through their territory. This constant flow of goods brought not just wealth to Petra, but also a rich cultural tapestry woven from diverse threads. Trade wasn't merely an economic activity for the Nabataeans. It was the lifeblood of their city, shaping their culture, their beliefs, and their very identity. The wealth generated by trade allowed them to create the architectural marvels that continue to captivate visitors today. Yet, Petra's reliance on trade also contained the seeds of its eventual decline. 
as Roman influence expanded, trade routes shifted, and new seafaring routes bypassed Petra's landlocked location. The once bustling markets gradually fell silent, the caravans dwindled, and Petra, the vibrant crossroads of civilization, slowly faded into the sands of time. However, the legacy of Petra's trading past endures, a testament to the power of commerce to connect cultures and fuel innovation. For centuries, Petra slumbered beneath the desert sun, hidden from the eyes of the world. The once bustling metropolis, reduced to whispers in the wind, faded into the realm of legend. The rediscovery of Petra reads like a scene from an adventure novel, a tale of exploration, intrigue, and the enduring allure of a lost civilization. In 1812, a young Swiss explorer named Johann Ludwig Burckhardt, disguised as an Arab scholar, embarked on a perilous journey through the Middle East. Driven by a thirst for knowledge and a fascination with ancient cultures, Burckhardt had heard rumors of a lost city carved into the mountains. Posing as a pilgrim, he infiltrated the Bedouin tribes who knew the secret paths to Petra, gaining their trust and ultimately access to the lost city. Imagine Burkhardt's awe as he emerged from the narrow confines of the Sikh, the sun-drenched facade of the treasury bursting into view. Burkhardt's rediscovery sparked a wave of interest in Petra, drawing explorers, archaeologists, and adventurers from across Europe. The rediscovery of Petra marked the beginning of a new chapter in the city's long and storied history. No longer a hidden city whispered about in hushed tones, Petra emerged from the shadows, its architectural wonders unveiled for the world to admire. This newfound fame, however, brought with it both opportunities and challenges, as the delicate balance between preservation and progress became increasingly precarious. Archaeologists, drawn by the allure of uncovering a lost civilization, descended upon Petra, eager to piece together the story of the Nabataeans and their remarkable city. Excavations revealed a wealth of artifacts, from intricately carved pottery and coins to elaborate tombs and temples, each discovery adding a new brushstroke to the portrait of this ancient culture. However, the influx of visitors, while crucial for raising awareness and generating funds for preservation, also posed a threat to Petra's delicate ecosystem. The footsteps of countless tourists, the encroachment of modern infrastructure, and the inevitable wear and tear of time all took their toll on the ancient city's fragile sandstone structures. Recognizing the urgent need to protect this irreplaceable cultural heritage, the Jordanian government, with UNESCO, embarked on a mission to safeguard Petra. Conservation efforts focused on stabilizing structures and sustainable tourism. The Bedouin tribes, guardians of Petra's secrets, played a vital role. Their traditions and respect for nature were invaluable in developing sustainable tourism. Today, Petra stands as a testament to human ingenuity, a symbol of cultural resilience, and a reminder of our shared responsibility to protect our planet's treasures. The sun sets on Petra, casting long shadows across the treasury's facade. The rose-colored sandstone deepens to a rich crimson, a final farewell before night. The silence is profound, broken only by the whisper of the wind, carrying stories of a city lost and found. Petra stands as a testament to human ingenuity, a city carved from the mountains. The Nabataeans transformed a harsh desert into a thriving metropolis, showcasing their resourcefulness and artistry. Their legacy endures, etched in the sandstone cliffs, whispering in the wind, beckoning us to remember Petra, the Rose City. Today, as we stand in awe of Petra's grandeur, we are reminded that even the most magnificent civilizations are transient. Yet, Within this realization lies a profound truth. The responsibility to protect and preserve our world's cultural treasures falls upon our shoulders. Petra's rediscovery marked not an ending, but a beginning, a call to action to safeguard this fragile legacy for future generations. Their efforts stand as a beacon of hope, a testament to our collective ability to learn from the past, to protect the present, and to inspire the future.